Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Corey Rosen, and you're listening to The Story Podcast. Today, I have on a super awesome band, The Real Fake Flowers. Known as the hottest genre band, Real Flake Flake. Real Mm -hmm. Fake Flowers will be releasing their debut album soon. Real Fake Flowers, based out of Princeton, New Jersey, consists of Kiffer and Nate, who started the band in late 2019 and gained traction with their single, Siamese, a duo who was not afraid to take inspiration from anywhere and apply it to their own music. The main goal of their project is to keep you on your toes and to expose everyone to genres that they may not have listened to prior. So that includes rock, indie, pop, and all that jazz. What can't they do? You can find them and their projects on Spotify, Instagram, and their website, realfakeflowersband.com. How are you guys doing today? Pretty, pretty good. good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. So tell me, uh, I guess we'll start one on one on one. Uh, Nate, where did your love of music and uh, when did you start to get into playing as a um, kid? Oh gosh, that's an excellent question. Um, I don't know. Like ever since, like as far as my memory goes back, I've always like felt super drawn to like guitar specifically. Um, but it wasn't until like middle school that I started getting more into like actually playing and picked up a guitar. Um, one band that like really just made me do it was Avenged Sevenfold. Um, yeah, I have a tattoo of the guitarist um, on my hand. Um, how about you? How about you, Kiffer? Um, yeah, I guess uh, I sort of got my beginnings from uh, Rock Band. Rock oh Band God, 2. Yeah, I forgot about that. Like, that too. Uh, if you know, like, Guitar Hero, it's, like, the same thing. Um, but basically, I was obsessed with the game, and my mom wouldn't let me buy it. So, in let, she was going to she was going to let me get it as long as I learned to actually play the guitar. Mm. So, that was sort of the segue into transitioning from just being a game to, like, <laughs> an actual, like, thing that's real. <laughs> So did you guys end up performing uh, apart from each other at first? Yeah. 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 Um, we were both a part of um, the School of Rock program. Yeah. Um, we went to two different schools, but um, they were like they kind of did stuff together a lot. So that's how we met. Yeah. So tell me about the School of Rock. What, what's 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 that about? What's the program? What's the goal? Uh, it's basically like um, a bunch of different kids get casted into different shows. And it's like each show is a different topic, so you can kind of choose which one interests you, and then you just play a bunch of songs from bands that are in that category, and then you perform them live. Wow. Um, so it's a it's a cool um, experience to get acclimated to playing live. <laughs> which, yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, sort of. I, I don't know about you, but like um, getting my beginning like jitters out of uh, anxiety playing live. Oh, it yeah. doesn't really matter. Yeah, <laughs> helps. <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was a, it was really fun. Um, my first show was like the Led Zeppelin show, so we just played songs by Led Zeppelin, um, and then both Kiffer and I were in house band, which is like the more advanced level where you play, I guess, more shows and, um, just more complicated stuff, and that's kind of how we met through that because our two house bands would play together. At like the Jersey Shore. Yeah. So at what point did you guys decide to uh, link up and start a band yourself? Um, well, it, kind of when we met, I was really just impressed by Nate's guitar ability. <laughs> um, and we were, at the time, we were into the same bands, like really like progressive, like guitar-centric music. So we started kind of doing that together when we first met. And then it's kind of, transition to a bunch of different things and ultimately we ended up um just making pop rock music <laughs> yeah we, we've we've made a lot of terrible music together <laughs> over the last two years um but yeah it started with like metal like guitar music and then kind of transitioned into just pop pop indie indie yeah. pop um and then now we kind of have our sound finally figured out. So what was what is your sound now? What do you think? Uh, I guess a, a good umbrella term is just indie rock. 
Um, but that doesn't really change like our, sort of like our roots and where we kind of drew inspiration from when we first started making music in the first place. So mm-hmm. like we take inspiration from super heavy bands. We take inspiration from like uh, bubblegum pop people. We take yeah. like whatever we can get our hands jazz. on. We don't, yeah, jazz. We or, both know some jazz theory, so we just throw that in. Yeah, Nick was Berkeley. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. So uh, what is your song process like, taking all these influences? How do you bring them together? Uh, what's the lyricism like? Kiffer is king of starting ideas. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, I think sort of like our process is I come up with like a skeleton, a song skeleton, um, which is sort of like most of the parts and sort of how or like a very broad idea of what the song should be. And then I bring it to Nate and then we sort of, Nate is like a production god. <laughs> um, and we sort of just, we found like after doing music and like making music and recording it, um, production is like the most important part when it comes to sort of having any character. For sure. Because uh, yeah. you can have a really well-written song and it'd be like the most boring thing on the planet yeah and vice versa so um yeah we i think those are probably we're lucky that those are our two strengths are like two (laughs) our brains are like opposites but like they perfectly like fit together almost like kiffer's got the super insane composition like structure knows like what to do in certain sections and then i'll do a lot of like production, like mixing. I'll add parts, um, change certain things. Um, I don't know. We kind of just like work really well together. So when once we do get in a room together, it's like it, it's dangerous. <laughs> it's dangerous. <laughs> so tell me about it about a, a song where it came or where do, where does your songwriting come from? I guess that's the question that I'm trying to get to. Does it come from personal experiences? Do you make up a story in your head? What uh, is it just, oh, I look, there's a bird. I'm going to write a song about a bird. Um, I guess just at, at least like lyricism, how that, it, it really just has to do with sort of, <laughs> I have a lot of problems. <laughs> I have a lot of mental problems. Um, and writing lyrics has been sort of a form of therapy for me. Mm. Um, so it's something that I do constantly, um, even if it's just like one random sentence that I write in my notes in my phone and then forget about it. Um, sometimes those just turn into like entire songs. But um, yeah, no, just dealing with at least where I am in life and figuring out myself is sort of the purpose of that. Um, yeah, that's... Have you ever tried your hand at writing songs, Nate? I I like write like instrumental stuff, but like I, when I try to write lyrics, it's just never no, it's just not we, good. We co-write lyrics sometimes. Like yeah. one song on um the album that's coming out, we've had co-written for oh, like I totally forgot about that. a year or so. Yeah. I like I don't know. I just I need to practice like lyric writing a lot more. But I don't know, Kiffer it just seems natural. Um, but like, I'll mainly, I'll write guitar parts, I'll write like drum bass stuff and like throw it all together. And then sometimes Kiffer will change half of it or not. And then (laughs) I'm picky. Yeah. No, that's a good good thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, you hold, you hold me to a standard and then I hold you to the same standard. Yeah. It it works out. So what do you guys are, uh, what song on your album are you most excited for people to hear? You want to go? It's a, it's a hard one. Um, I'd probably say it's between two. I think it's either track three, um, System Restart, that we just released, or the last song on the album called What a Save. Um, yeah, what, what a Save is probably... Um, well, it's up there for me. I don't know if it's my favorite. I think what I'm really excited for people to hear is probably Perfect Company. 
Oh yeah, that mm-hmm. one too. I don't know. They're all they all have like a weird different element that I'm excited for people to hear. Um, so it's kind of hard. Yeah. Why are you excited for people yeah. to hear these songs? Um, so this album we've been experimenting a lot with different sounds. So, um, what a save is the last song in the album, and it's like six, almost seven minutes long. Oh wow! And it's starts as this like acoustic ballad thing and then it builds like this huge crescendo into something else that's completely electronic and weird it's also got some like weird country twang in it which i don't know where that came from because i personally don't listen to any country yeah me neither but it works yeah it (laughs) It works it was what we wanted to achieve with that um and i think we did it pretty well so it's new for us, I think, is why it's exciting for people. Yeah. Did you plan this album as like a story or as a concept album, or is it just a, a bunch of songs that you guys thought fit together? Uh, it definitely started that way. Um, I think I, I started, I went like, I do this thing when I write, is like I pump out like a f- three or four songs like in a really short amount of time. <laughs> and I, I, wrote a few of the songs on the album in like February or so um, with the intention of it being a concept album. Mm. But um, it kind of transformed into something else that's not really like story driven. It doesn't really have like a story to it. Um, But it's sort of just like a chaotic um, quest to find love and <laughs> be happy and be content with yourself. It's sort of that kind of thing. It's um, sort of supposed to uh, represent my chaotic thoughts, if, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Got to find that self-love. <laughs> no, for real, though. It's important. Uh, speaking about like self-love and trying to find yourself, how do you guys uh, operate in a place like Princeton, New Jersey? I don't know the area that well. I don't know the music scene. Is it is it cut and cutthroat, or is it? Uh, I wouldn't say there's too much of a music scene in Princeton. Um, really? Not really. Um, unless I'm wrong. Yeah. I mean, I'm the one that lives there. Kiffer yeah, is um, out in Doylestown. Okay. In Pennsylvania. Um, yeah. There's like not too much of a music scene. It's kind of like. It's just you got Princeton, which is like Princeton University, mm-hmm. and then everything surrounding it is just a bunch of fields and corn. Oh, really? So it's just um, it's just there because the university is there? Yeah, pretty much. Wow. I mean, we're close. We're like in between, like right in between New York and Philly, um, mm-hmm. which both have pretty good music scenes. Uh, so we've played shows in New York and Philly, but we haven't really played any local shows in okay. Princeton because there's not too many places. So then how do you how do you get gigs? Um well sort of yeah. I mean we our manager is um been helping us out with booking and um we also just have a few connections from people that we've met like over the fat past few months or so. Yeah. And we've um, had other bands like ask if we wanna hop on a bill. Yeah. Um and, I, the weird thing is, is <laughs> we sort of got most of our attention from like TikTok. That's mm. sort of how we've built or started building a fan base. So the thing with TikTok is cool, but it's also like we're kind of an internet band. Right. So we don't have much of a draw from any specific area. It's just like all spread out. Um, which yeah, it's cool in the long run, but when you're starting out playing shows, it's yeah, usually it's the inverse. You start yeah, out yeah. locally and then you go internet. Yeah, exactly. it's, internet it's just a local. weird situation because yeah. like I don't know what I was gonna say. Because yeah. you don't get paid through TikTok. No, not right. unless you're like massive. Massive. Yeah. yeah. So how did you guys uh, get on the TikTok? Did you start making TikToks with your own music, or and then just kind of throw it through there? Yeah, um, we, I mean, I started making TikToks in, like, like almost a year ago now, which is weird to think about. Um, but, yeah, I would just, like, upload videos of me playing an acoustic guitar in my car and, like, singing songs. Um, 
and then that sort of like once we started getting music out there we would start promoting those songs on there and then for some reason people really were drawn to Siamese Mm. um, and that sort of just built from there and we promoted that song so much on that app I hated TikTok at first I just did not I don't I didn't like watching it I didn't like creating anything on it and and then once Siamese started doing well on TikTok, I'm like, okay, I need to make to. three TikToks a day, and they all need to be super good, and then it's become a problem. Now I, no, I, I hate – uh, I'm so against TikTok. <laughs> I know. I, I hate it with all of my heart still. It's, it's really good um, for outreach. <laughs> it's not, not the best for, like, you know, like your typical, like, show announcements or any kind of thing like that right of course it's it's to get your stuff out there yeah and it's but it i hate it because you have to be constant you have to have interesting content all the time and it's random (laughs) whatever whatever goes off yeah it doesn't help uh like uh attention span problem that i know I, I, i have adhd uh to all galore and i'm like that's one reason why I didn't want to buy TikTok because I or, or buy get download TikTok because uh, I had Vine back in the day and it was the exact same thing then. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and TikTok was just basically is now basically just Vine uh, on steroids. Yeah. So it, it was it was a hard get for me. And then when I had to start this podcast, kind of if you want to market anything, especially on the internet, right? TikTok's your spot. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So have you guys wanted to go on any any tours or and where's where's Here's a question. What's one of the most interesting spots you've ever played at? Ooh. Uh, we've had a lot of interesting <laughs> shows starting out. Like, we haven't been playing too many shows because we kind of just started, mm-hmm. like, to play live. Um, but the ones that we have played have been really, really interesting. Yeah. Um, as far as venues go, uh, we just played at, a small coffee shop in Philly um, called The Pharmacy, and we opened for Mega Mango, and it's, like, the tiniest room, and it was, like, just shoulder-to-shoulder people the entire building, and it was, like, this really small condensed space. (laughs) Yeah, one AC unit. Yeah. (laughs) One window AC. Oh, my God. It was so hot. It was... But uh, it was a it was a super cool venue, um, um, yeah. But yeah, no. As soon as you like stepped on stage, it was like you're already just dripping. Yeah. we didn't even sure. play a single note, and I was like completely just. You know, that's that's something why people are like, oh, can I bring my whole band on here? I'm like, you see the size of this room? Yeah, I only have I only have four chairs. <laughs> yeah. So uh, go back going back to the tour thing. Is it sounds like you guys something to say about that? Um, there is, m- there might be things in development soon, but that's something that we're actively trying to um, get organized. Yeah, we, we, we would, would love we to would, go yeah. on tour. It's just a matter of funding it and oh yeah, funding managing fund. budgeting a tour yep. yeah. And uh, you guys have a manager. Tell me about how you guys get a manager, why you guys got a manager, and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Um, well, we found him through TikTok. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, um, he reached out to us. Um, I think Kiffer talked to, to Jason first. That's what we call him. Yeah. Um, and then we kind of became friends first, I think. Yeah, it was, I, it's weird because I didn't like talk to him that yeah, much in the beginning. Yeah, it was no, mainly you. Yeah, it was mainly me. And basically, like he started talking to us like about merch, like if we had any sort of things available, which we didn't because we didn't know what we were doing then. Mm-hmm. Um, and then eventually, it just turned out to him constantly wanting to help us, and that sort of just spiraled into maybe you could be like our booking agent or something. And he was like, yeah, I'm totally and down. And then he started doing everything. Shows, <laughs> yeah. And then he was like, you all should do this and then that. And then do a little bit more of that. And then <laughs> and now then, we have the Jason. Now we have the Jason and we love the Jason. So what is it like to work with somebody remotely? Because he's all the way in like LA, right? Uh, Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Um, 
one of the L cities. <laughs> it's like, it's not, it's not too bad. I feel like I'm, at least for me, I'm so used to doing things online now because of mm-hmm. like remote school and everything. Um, also, we communicate with a lot of people just over social media anyways because of TikTok. So I'm, um, I feel like it's not too difficult. Yeah. And just like in general with sort of the foundation of the band is it's not really a local thing, if yeah. that makes sense. Right. Like there's people from my town that don't know we exist. <laughs> yeah. And we're both pretty resourceful people when it comes to just doing everything. Like we pretty much do everything ourselves. So we don't need a physical person to be here doing things for us but like we would definitely like to be advised on certain aspects yeah it's it's one thing to do something by yourself and then uh one thing to have somebody who knows what they're doing do it yeah yeah it's so much more helpful so do you guys have future plans to base yourself into a city like new york city or philadelphia um we would definitely love to Right now, as of right now, I think we're thinking Philly. Yeah. Eventually in the future. Rent's cheap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, that's true. Yeah. And our financial situation isn't the best. So. Yeah. We are the definition of broke college students. <laughs> yeah. Except for me. I'm just broke. <laughs> I am. I dropped out of school. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, Philly is probably the go-to as of right now but we still have to get everything figured out yeah who knows like maybe in a year we don't know what's going to be happening so we're kind of just playing it like going day by day but long-term plan is philly it's always good to have a long-term plan it's where a lot of musicians fall short Mm -hmm. yeah um speaking about long-term plans college what are you uh what are you for at berkeley um Right now, I so music am a, I don't know what, what, sem- what, what semester am I? Well, you're a junior. Fifth. I think I'm fifth, yeah. So I'm a fifth yeah. semester at Berkeley. Um, they have a degree called Pro Music, which is a build-your-own-major type really? degree. Um, so I didn't want to go like just straight up music business or production. So I'm, I pretty much like... If I declare pro music, I can pick and choose like classes from each. So um, I just have focuses in both music business and production. What do you think is the most valuable thing you've learned so far? That's a great, excellent question. Um, I think <laughs> the most valuable thing I've learned so far is that if anyone presents a contract of any sort to you, don't. Be get stupid and get a lawyer. <laughs> get a lawyer. <laughs> get a lawyer. No, you're, yeah. you're absolutely correct. Uh, contracts are not fun. Yeah. No. I don't like they we've I've had classes that go over contracts and everything and like what to look out for. But when you're looking at a contract, everything is so there's so many words. And it's and so it's, it's always small print. Yeah, it's small print. It's like vague Single in space. certain areas and then super super complicated in other areas so i feel like just spending some money and not getting completely That's screwed yeah. is have you ever been good. screwed over by a contract almost <laughs> almost <laughs> um but we took some time on it and got a lawyer and thought it over so and got it, to know the person yeah a little bit better <laughs> didn't really it just wasn't 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 right for us. No. Well, it's always good. It's always good to make sure that you know the person that you're performing for, at least. Yes. Thank uh, you. Well, well <laughs> no. I mean, because you, you know, you never know what, what you're walking into. It's yeah. It's why I make it a point to make a pre-call with all everybody because I just want to at least get a basis of like, okay, this is what they sound like. This is kind of who they are a little bit. Um, I'd like to get to know the person that I'm signing my potential life away to. Right, exactly. It's, it's such like they hand you a contract, you're like, sorry, I can't read. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, what's the future like for you guys as of right now? You guys you have your album releasing. When is that releasing? Uh, well, the whole thing is going to be out on the 23rd. 
of um, August of this month. Yeah, yeah. Um, kind of took an interesting approach to releasing because we just wanted to switch it up and do something new that could potentially be really stupid. But um, we're pretty much like there's this thing called a waterfall release, and it's where you release like one song. Usually, it's like over a long period of time, like one month, and then the next month, and then the next month. But instead of doing months, we kind of just condensed it down into three weeks. So we're like yeah. releasing a song every Tuesday and Friday of this month, and just kind of curious to see how like Spotify and Apple Music react because they have like their own little algorithms that do things. Yeah, we're trying to finesse the algorithms. Yeah, will it work? We don't know. It could completely flop. Well, I mean, that's half the game. Is is not? It doesn't matter about your talent. It's the it's whether or not you can control the algorithm. Yeah, for real. Yeah, it's ninety nine percent luck. It really, that, everything in this industry. That's another reason yeah. why I hate TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> all the stupid yeah. stuff that's recommended to me. It's like why it, yeah. how yeah. did this get well, anywhere? The annoying part about TikTok being our like biggest platform, besides like. I guess Spotify at this point. Yeah. But um, you have to like learn how the algorithm works and TikTok's algorithm does not make any, any sense. sense. It also changes. It changes so constantly, much. at least every week. Yeah. But the, the main thing that's consistent is watch time and shares. So if you make a video where people watch it all the way through, it's more likely to get on other people's pages and then so on and so forth. And if it's ridiculous enough, they'll share it to people. <laughs> yeah. So, so we, we kind of like try and throw in a mix of like different types of content, like stuff that's like focused on our music, just silly, stupid things that people might be able to relate to. And then throw in a little little bit of controversy. Yeah. yeah get, if you put some, some controversy reactions. in there. Oh, yeah, it, it, like it's all, all PR is good PR, right? Yeah. yeah. Like Nate made a video making fun of like, 50 year old dudes playing blues. Um, and then oh, it damn. got like. It was about like the feel. There's like this intense, <laughs> intense argument in the guitar community of shredding versus the feel, which mm. any person that knows what good music sounds like would know that you can't just go on either end. It's just like you gotta mix them. Um, and everybody thought I was like defending like straight up just like a million notes per second shredding guitar and everybody was freaking out and it kind of like blew up a little Got bit. Got like half a million views. <laughs> yeah. That's stupid. Just kind of half a million views. It's yeah. stupid. And he said blew up a little bit. So many people like either agreeing or just really people, intense reactions. Yeah, people were really hostile. Yeah, like, they were they really, really toxic. quick to assume that you were being like really mean. Yeah, and, <laughs> and I was, was just, just making a joke. a joke. It was like, why, why can't I just make a joke? Why do we got to take all this so seriously? I don't know it, it drives me nuts with people who take seri- uh, music so seriously because in truth it's all theoretical anyway. Yeah, yeah, every right. It's all subjective and it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> and you literally take a look at our account. I'm just playing some stupid guitar in an indie band. I don't shred. Yeah. Or play the blues. I was just, I'm just a third party here. Yeah. And especially when it comes to that conversation, because you're right, it should be a nuanced conversation where. There's times to shred and there's times to feel things out. Exactly. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> People just, how dare you? I yeah. want to feel the music. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Or like, oh, dude, uh, Jimi Hendrix, are you kidding me? Like, Steve, Stevie Ray Vaughan. You hate Stevie Ray Vaughan? Yeah, I'm just like when, I never when? said anything about <laughs> well, Stevie yeah, Ray Vaughan. Right, right, right. said that because you said, "Oh, I hate people who shred." And they're like, "Oh, so you must hate uh, all these all the people yeah. who, by the way, probably didn't consider what they were doing shredding. They probably were just improvising, yeah, yeah. feeling it, yeah. yeah, truthfully, silly, silly, silly stuff, silly guitar people. Yeah, silly. <laughs> guitarists are the most opinionated people in the world, and yeah. I am allowed to say that because I'm a guitarist, but. Me too. Honestly, anybody can say that. Yeah, you don't have to play guitar. You can hate guitar players. Yeah, just hate guitar players. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're allowed, allowed to hate guitar <laughs> players. <laughs> Anyone else? No. Oh my gosh. Is, uh, tar- guitar players do get a lot of. It's it's really funny whenever I'm listening to a guitar player and and like oh this pedal makes it go bzz, and this pedal makes it go whop. <laughs> I need these, some, these knobs. I need I need some more whammy too or or yeah. whatever. I need 
some of these ridiculous terms that I've heard guitars use. I'm like, I'm sorry, yeah. can you just speak English? Yeah, it sounds cool. It sounds cool, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, it sounds it, sounds nice. Yeah, it sounds cool. And can you apply it? And what is your purpose for what you're doing? Yeah. Those are the important things. Sometimes I feel like we just throw in weird sounds to just throw in weird well, sounds. Well, yeah, that's the point of it, though. Is like yeah, that's true. because it is weird. Because it's yeah. weird. Yeah. Yeah. And it sounds cool. Yeah, it, there's intent behind that decision. Yeah. You know? So we have one of your songs that I like to play, Your Apartment. Tell me about that one. Um, yeah, uh, that one I wrote about uh, a relationship um, where uh, the person and I were in completely different headspaces. And um, it's sort of about... Uh, having different perspective in life from someone who you're really close to and um, how sometimes certain people might not be good for you because of their mindset of how to go through life, I guess. Mm. So what's the... Uh, is it, it, does it go through that mindset in this song or is it just about that it, concept in general? It's, it's sort of about the concept... Um, Mainly, the point that I'm, I was trying to make was it, it, the song talks about seeing the apartment from the city, and that's sort of a metaphor for, metaphor for, of sort of just life in the city and wanting to pursue like things like going to a really good school, getting a really good, like getting good money, and like living like the American dream. Mm hmm. And it's sort of uh, my personal bias against that and sort of just wanting to live life for what it is because not everybody's going to have that, I guess. Yeah. And this was almost not a song, I'm pretty sure, because it was a demo for a very long time. And then at one point, I think Kiffer was like, I, yeah, I almost, don't want to do anything. I almost cut it. Yeah. And then I was like, no, nah, this could be really, really cool. And then... Yeah. But the what made it interesting again was the production. Yeah, that's the only reason why it's a song. So what's what's some of the production aspects that people should look out for? Um, really cool. fuzzy guitars. Yo, the guitar yeah, I noticed tones, that. the guitar tones in this one, especially. Yeah. I don't know what we were, what we were doing that day, but it, they were some. Yeah. Mwah. Yeah, love um, some drastic, aggressive guitars. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what else is in there? It's pretty like is actually with the vocal. Simple. Is there something with the vocal? Uh, I guess sort of like crowd vocals. We we experimented with layering mm. a yeah. lot on this album. We also love the fuzzy vocals too. We like yeah. making things fuzzy. Yeah. Um, we got we got some eight oh eights in there. Oh yeah, there there's like really deep sub bass. There, um, there really is. Yeah. I was playing it here and I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. mainly in the. Wait, I don't know what, what 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 are the vocals doing at that part? I think is it the chorus. Yeah. Yeah, the chorus, but there's just like a little bit of eight oh eight in there. Well, with that said, this is your apartment by the real fake flowers. <laughs>
and that was your apartment by the real fake flowers is that on your album that is track two yes track two and it's already been uh released technically i guess from you guys yeah yes. that was a a single we released last month mm-hmm. here's a question before we get into the other other conversation i wanted to talk about <laughs> what why the why real fake flake why real fake flowers? It's funny that you say real fake Every, flowers because everyone does that. says it's, real fake it's flowers. It's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> like my dad says it every single time he tries to say real fake flowers. I can barely even say it. It's a, it's yeah. a tongue twister. It um, is. But yeah, wait, you were asking about speaking the name. of your dad. Yeah, why? Oh yeah, speaking of my my dad. Okay. Um, do you know the company Liquid Death, like the water company? They come in these cans. It's not black, is it? Like, yeah, it's black. black it's like a black. And, I know and then, BLK is... Oh, no, no, it's not okay. that. But um, there's this water company called Liquid Death. I'm talking way too much about Liquid Death. Honestly, we should get a Liquid Death endorsement for Liquid this. Liquid sponsor. Please, because please, it please, is please, 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 the best water please. ever. Um, it was like the black minimal water, though, kind of concept, right? Like the actual water's black? Yeah. No, it's like oh, clear, no. but like okay. a can is like... It's literally just water in a yeah. can. <laughs> it's water. Oh, wow. oh, okay. It's water in a can. But it's really good water in a can. Um, and I had one of those cans, and like the, like the the can looks super metal. Like everything about the can just looks metal. <laughs> and and um, I I don't know why I was like I'm gonna use this can as a as like a a vase almost a vase a vase. A vase. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I bought fake flowers and I cut them and then I put it in the liquid death can and then my dad walks in my room and I think Kiffer was there too. I was sitting on your bed. Yeah. And um, he goes, those are some real fake flowers. And then I'm like, that's that's, that's a, a good, that's a band name. And that's like we were, at the time we were like trying so hard to think of a band name. Yeah. This was like only a year and a half ago, I think. What were some uh, band name rejects that you guys yeah, had? What were some? I don't even remember. There was one. Oh, there's one that I, I oh, can't I have think no of. No idea. I can't think of the name. I feel like it was like a pun on something, or like, um, or there was like a song. There was a song that was gonna be a song name, but we were like, we should use that. For arrogance is bliss. Oh my god, <laughs> arrogance is bliss. That's yeah, a, that's it. Oh my god, that's so stupid. That's but that's a good, like, if it's a band name, that's a good band name. I feel yeah. like a lot of a, band, a lot of band names are dumb as all get out. Like yeah. real fake flowers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I mean, even then, you, you have all of, like, Three Doors Down. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I like, like uh, Prince, Nickelback. Was Prince even, Daddy and the Hyena. R- yeah. Right. Like, st- stuff. The I honestly think the stupider things. it is and, like, the, the less sense it, it makes, the better. Yeah. Yeah. And the more recognizable for sure. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. sorry, more what did you unique. say? That's the yeah. whole point. I guess now things are getting so weird because everything has been done before. So yeah. That's <laughs> trying fair, to find yeah. something that makes you I think unique. we didn't want a the and then mm. object. Like I yeah. can name a million the and then a thing. Bands, the Rex, the Wallows. That's all I can Bro, think of. <laughs> it's Wallows. You need to stop. Wait, is it not it's the, the not Wallows? It's not the Wallows. Yo, it's Wallows. What? Are you for real? Yes. <laughs> I've told I guess, you this multiple times. I guess times. I just say the Wallows well, in sentences. It's so also like just... like the band. How are you going to say, oh, this is the band. Uh, wallows. The real. F- yeah, right, right, right. It, it's like you have to precede it with the, the real. Yeah, so I, in my head, I've changed it to uh, the Wallows. Yeah. What other the bands? The Verge. The Strokes. Yeah, the Strokes. Um, that's all I can think of. It's like yeah. Name ten cereals and you forget everything. Name yeah. every person ever. Name <laughs> name your family. Wait, oh, who? <laughs> <laughs> who are they? So, um, getting back to the question that that we talked about uh, during the the song, uh, you're non-binary. Yes. What was that journey like for you? How has that affected your band music perception, etc.? Uh, well, I think, um. Probably the only reason it, for me that this is even a band, if I'm being honest, mm. um, because when I was like not a part of the LGBT community, I was extremely um, like I was repressing all the parts of myself that sort of make me who I am. And those are all the fun things that are about real fake flowers that now we come to enjoy, I suppose. Yeah. 
Um, so it, yeah, it sort of goes hand in hand with like the thing I was talking about with lyrics and sort of like finding myself and um, lyric writing has been a huge help for that because it's been, it kind of helps me um, deal with all the sporadic, chaotic, manic thoughts that I was going through um, during my journey, I guess. Yeah. I would 100% say that Kiffer has like seriously evolved over the past year and a half. This is true. Yeah. Have you guys have had received any negative feedback or like absolute hate because of it? <laughs> we get we've gotten a comment or two on TikTok. Um, it's really funny, but it's it's just funny at this point yeah. because our fan base is so supportive. Yeah. Um, yeah, we we heavily our a lot of our fan base is a part of the LGBT yeah. community, so um, which makes sense. Like yeah. <laughs> so it's it's a really 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 wholesome. Um, family that we've built, which is really, yeah. really cool. <laughs> Good. Next question. What are some mistakes that you guys have made or you've seen other bands make? How can we uh, encourage new, newer musicians or upcoming musicians to not make those same mistakes again? Mm. I think it's not like a serious mistake, but I think a big mistake is giving people that comment pretty much just like haters giving them the time of day like you should really just ignore them and especially me I feel like I'm not always the best about it's, it it's hard yeah oh yeah like yeah no like, there's you could get 20 comments like the like, most job, great. wholesome thing and it's the one hate comment that like just yeah. destroys it may, well it, yeah. it makes you can see all the good comments and they won't make you feel anything but the yeah. hate comment makes you feel everything. And yeah. it's like, why? Why? Yeah, which you just got to... It's kind of funny. But you know, like, I feel like if you're going to do this and like create music and be a band, like at least somewhat professionally, you kind of just have to it's a part expect of it. that. It's a part of it. And you should just ignore it mainly because they're just... You're going to give them what they want yeah. if you don't. Right. They're the one behind a screen and you're the one putting yourself out there. Yeah. And it's always the always the TikTok accounts with no videos, no yeah. nothing, no profile picture. 12 followers. <laughs> yeah. Whenever, I haven't had any of those comments yet, but some of the things I've, I've always wanted to do whenever I got one, which is like, hey, thanks for commenting. Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, just like a thing, thanks for uh, giving me more attraction. Kill them with yeah. kindness. <laughs> exactly. Kill them with kindness. Or I'll just be like, Real fake flowers on Spotify, any streaming platform. Or yeah, with, like, like a heart. Oh, if you if you didn't like this video, maybe you wouldn't like this video. Here you, go. Yeah. <laughs> you should go hate watch this too. Yeah. Help 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 us with, out with it the really algorithm. Honestly, does like yeah. hate comments. Like the more you comment, the more the we're more gonna, trash. Yeah, gonna, yeah. And that's honestly, uh, if we going into that specifically, it's also kind of a marketing technique. Yeah. Um, I I forget what the term is called, but making something sort of controversial pushes away a certain audience that you don't want anyway, mm -hmm. and then it allows yeah. um, more people who... I know I know how Kiffer you know. feels about MGK, but MGK is a marketing genius, and I will stand by that. <laughs> this is true. I mean, anyone at that level is a marketing genius. Yeah. Right, because, because that's how they got there. I mean, think about, yeah. like, two years ago. Like, you barely heard about MGK... As soon as he like started the Eminem beef and then the Slipknot beef, like yeah. I feel like I hear about him at least once or twice a week, like and I can't avoid not hearing about MGK. I was like, I haven't heard of <laughs> this. Might be a little bit controversial, but I didn't hear anything about Chris Rock or Will Smith until the slap. Yeah, that too. Yeah. and that was like, but I don't know if that was legit or not. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm. I have I'm no very idea. Curious though. But I'm sure we'll Either way, find I out. think it worked out for both. For both of them, yeah, for yeah. Sure. yeah. It, like I said, any PR is good PR. Exactly. Yeah. Because people are gonna know your name. Oh, that's a person that exists. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I wouldn't really want to go to the MGK extent of like half the world hating you. Hating you? Yeah, no. no. But no. like to like a certain extent, it is beneficial to you. And yeah, I feel like if you go overboard, that's not good because then literally everyone. 
Oh, right. Of course. Like, See, there, there's, there's, there's a limit hate. for sure. Yeah. But people like controversial people. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's always fun to watch. It, there's always someone that agrees with you, and there's always someone that disagrees. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's something you got to keep in mind always, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, so, what are some things that you know now that you wish you had known when you first started? Be patient. Mm. Patience. <laughs> and yeah. keep doing it. Yeah, you're going to write. Like, I wish me now could have just told old me that you're going to write terrible music for, for like a very years. long time. <laughs> Like a really long time. So start now. But then yeah. one day, it's just going to kind of click, and you're going to like fall into your, niche. your sound, yeah, your niche, um, and it will all become a lot easier just creating. And then, then you got to deal with the stuff that you don't know, mm. like now. Like, like we could definitely be more business savvy in some ways. That like they're, like I feel like we always need to learn something. Yeah, for sure. So like you're never going to stop learning new things either right now it, it's something i wish i had uh they always tell you oh practice now so it'll be good later yeah 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 but it's so true it is yeah. it, you have to put the time in to be good at it you're just not gonna it's not gonna even those with that talent need to put time into it to keep keep it up exactly yeah. also and it can be the most discouraging thing ever working on music um Cause you like spend so so much time on something, and then it's really me on the way here. We were listening to old demos, um, and we we're like, "What were we doing? Why was this a thing?" And like, we probably spent hours on different demos, and they're it's just like trash, they're like man. terrible, and it's just. Yeah, right, yeah. But like, you need to do it. Yeah, yeah, you need, you need to for sure. Yeah, yeah, and that goes not even just music; it's just everything. Everything. Yeah, it. I always I always enjoy the memes that are like. Uh, hey babe, are you still working on that one part of that one song that's not going to change anything? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, yeah, because I have to. Oh yeah. yeah, and at a certain point, like there's there's so many people that like write music and they record it, but then they don't release it because they're always Scary. saying it's not like ready or it's not yeah. finished. Like that's at me. a certain point, you just need to be like, okay, this is the way it sounds and. Yeah. I'm just gonna. Okay. I'm just yeah. I'm just gonna do it. Like I could name a whole bunch of things like mix wise in all of our songs. That I'd be like, I would change that. But like if I kept doing that, it would never be released. Yes, yeah, you would never hear any of these songs. Yeah. And the problem is that your your opinion or your thoughts or your feelings towards a thing are always changing because uh, subconsciously you're, you're never at one goal. Oh, it needs to sound like this because the next day you're going to be like, oh, well, it needs to sound like this actually. Yeah. yeah. And then I'll send it to somebody who didn't work on it and they'll be like, this sounds perfect. Like I wouldn't change anything. Right. Yeah. Like the only reason I feel like I think half of these things is because I know exactly you what has gone person, yeah. into everything that is like gone into everything to make it the way that it sounds. I don't know if that was English. <laughs> well, well, it's because it's it's the syndrome that you've been listening to it you know, you can hear all those tiny imperfections that nobody else in the entire world would hear unless they have listened to it that many times in that yeah. short amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something that we constantly have to check ourselves on um, because we'll spend like an entire day just like making minute tweaks and then going into the car and listening to it. Yeah. And then listening on AirPods. Well, that's kind of what you have to do too. Yeah. Switching to a different car. Yeah. <laughs> And then going back inside and making yeah. just more no, tiny changes. For the, for the album, we were in my room. We had the speakers in my room. I would listen to them on AirPods. Then we'd go to my car. And then we'd go to my dad's car. And then we'd go to my girlfriend's car. And then we'd go back and then change it and then do the same thing at least like three times for every single song. Well, I mean, and that might sound manic, but that is stuff you got to worry about because the AirPods are going to sound way different than, you know, quality speakers than uh, whatever whatever quality speaker you have in your car. Or lack thereof. The worst or or lack thereof. Exactly, exact, no, right. We both have Honda Fits, and we both agree that they are probably the worst speakers on the planet. But they're so good for testing songs because the worse it sounds, if you can make it sound good, then it's gonna yeah. be and it's like, gonna be good. It's across the board. If it sounds good in a Honda Fit, it's gonna sound good on everything. So, what do you have any tips and tricks for those uh, mixing or producers that you'd like to share? Hmm. 
I feel like I'm not qualified to answer <laughs> this question. Um, everyone has I'm, their own like tips a and lot tricks, of though. a lot of the stuff I've learned has been off YouTube. Um, I wouldn't underestimate YouTube either. Mm-hmm. A lot of people think that they need to go to like get a college degree to be a super like, insane like mixer class. person, but I honestly find that a lot of the self-taught people are equally as good, if not better. Yeah. Um, like all the insane producers right now who are like older, they, I don't think they had, they didn't have a school to go to, to produce. Right. Um, as for tips and tricks, I would say, what's, what's a fun, I don't like know cause I just do it. I, I don't. Is there anything that you've seen me do that's just like, wow, that's kind of fun? I think not exactly a tip or a trick, um, but I think making decisions based on your creativity is more important. Like, that's like foremost. Yeah. And then kind of getting it to sound like you're, listen to your ear, I guess. Don't just do something that. Like this specific thing needs to have this exact EQ chain, like yeah, because that's I, how it's chain done. And yeah, just make it the way that you want it to sound. Like get get the creative part out first, and then make it sound. Yeah, good. I also think people underestimate. Like, so you can have like an insanely clean mix, but like I feel like your mix has to work with the song. Like if you like mm. have a really interesting song and you have like the most basic like super insane like clean mix it'll sound good but i think a mix adds so much personality to a song that people don't realize um i wouldn't consider like any of our mixes super professional but i think they all have personality in different ways um so you don't need like a perfectly crystal clear mix to have a really good song and i think something that will make everybody's lives a million times easier is having the best possible recording from the source. And I'm sure a lot of everyone says this. Oh, yeah. But, I like, you need a really, really good recording from the source to have, like, a really good yeah. mix. Invest money in a good microphone. Invest money in a good audio interface. Um, we use all stock, almost all stock Logic plugins. Yeah, so we spent what, what is two hundred dollars for Logic? Yeah, that's right. yeah, that. yeah. two hundred dollars for Logic. You like obviously there's like different plugins that we would want to buy to yeah. like hopefully step up to the next level. But I feel like you need to practice with what is like what offered given, for yeah. free. Yeah, first. You can achieve the same results. Yeah. So, oh my gosh, people! I all of my songs that I do, I only use this like the stock midis that they have, and people are like, "Did you try just the r- real drums?" And I'm like, "No, I just yeah. it's because I, I I they sound fake, duh." So you got to use the plugins to make them sound better, and yeah. that's and and so now I can EQ stuff on the fly without even uh, having to think about it. I know exactly what reverb uh, should be used. I know exactly uh, what drum set or mix of drum sets or what cello or what cellos or or, uh, MIDI stuff that I need. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And also I think personally for me, getting, learning how to mix drums was the most difficult, which I I feel like I picked up on it. Like, especially once we started working on this album, I don't know. I just got into like the groove of like knowing what to put on drums and like how to mix them like fast and well. Um, But like if you have bad recording, like a bad recording of drums, you're not gonna be able to like mix it unless you're Rick Rubin or something, or unless you're going for that sort of sound. Yeah, like Mm -hmm. for our drums, we have um, somebody I met at Berkeley who's now not at Berkeley because they're insane. Um, His name is Travis Harwick. Um, He records all the drums for us. We send him like MIDI drums and. He'll kind of like recreate them and then splice them up a little bit, and um, his drum recording like I don't think he really like knows too much like about recording drums. He like I think he told me he just throws on his mics and then plays. Like I don't know what what it is if it's the room or something, but like it's the cleanest sounding drums I've ever heard. Like you can mm-hmm. put them in and they sound good, just like with nothing on them. 
Like wow. if you have that, then it's going to be a million times easier to like really just yeah. make it sound clean. The drums are your foundation for the yeah. mix. And then uh, even with a clean drum mix, you can still like throw on distortion and like really make them messy. So where are where can people find you? We're going to go off the radio. So where can people find you? Or do you have any upcoming gigs or dates or anywhere? Um, well, you can find us on any social platform. Uh, we're on Twitter, Instagram. Instagram is at Real Fake Flowers. Flowers. Um, have two Vs. That's yeah, it. two Vs. The W in Flowers is two Vs because somebody took Flowers or Real Fake Flowers. Sad. Um, Sad. We're on any streaming service. Um, if you want to book them, you can book them through Stage Rush. Yeah. Right? I think do we have Stage Rush. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, we got <laughs> Stage Rush. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I think. Yeah. Um, but if not, we also, our email is linked to all of our accounts. So shoot us an email. And as for upcoming gigs, um, September 10th, we will be, I'm not sure. It, I don't think it's in Philly, but it's um, the Phantom Power Festival. Um. So that just rings a bell because there's a Phantom Power here in Millersville. I was like, oh. oh. Hmm. Wait, look. Is, it, is it a venue? It's a venue, yeah. Phantom oh, Power. then, we're, yeah, we're playing at Phantom Power. I guess we're playing. <laughs> is it like a, it, does it have like a balcony too? You don't know. <laughs> this is beyond yeah. me. I haven't been there yet. Uh, there will be a Phantom Power and we will be playing it. Maybe that's where I found you guys. I can't remember where I find anybody anymore. I feel like a, Jason may have found you. It's probably what happened now that I'm thinking about it. The Jason. The Jason. The Jason. Great dude. Great dude. Jason yeah. is great Gen- dude. Very generous, too. Yeah. Jason saves animals, too. Really? Yes. That's cool. I don't know. I don't all know. Around American dude. hero. Yeah. <laughs> Jason is the all-American hero. Yeah. Well, if you have enjoyed this episode on the, on the radio, please be sure to follow me or my podcast, or both, at The Story, Corey Rosen. I can be found anywhere, streaming, platforms, Spotify, Facebook, Instagram is at the underscore story underscore podcast. You can check us out and all upcoming guests on there. With that said, we're going to get you guys back to the radio, but we're going to continue on Facebook Live. Sweet. So we have one of the, one of the other songs that we weren't allowed to play on the radio. Oh, yeah. Siamese. Siamese. Yeah, oh, tell yeah. me about this one. Um. Yeah, I, I, funny. I, I have a funny. The first What's time, um, I think Kiffer had a little bit of a guitar part and like a verse or something for this. This was like I will explain two summers ago yeah. or something. And the first time I heard it, I was on the beach. I could barely hear anything. I just heard the one guitar part, and I'm like, this is gonna be an amazing, amazing thing. Yeah. What? So. This is, I guess, more advice that I will give to songwriters is if you have, like, an idea in your head, don't say, like, okay, I'm going to record that or I'm going to, like, document that in a few minutes. Like, I'll, I'll remember. Now. Do it now. now. So I was... Oh, the ideas I've lost. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was going to bed, and I got the idea for the chorus melody and the chord progression in my head mm. right before I was going to go to bed and I didn't want to get out of bed and I just got out of bed. <laughs> yeah. And then I picked up a guitar and then I played it and I hummed it and recorded it on my phone and then just went to bed and then the next day wrote the majority of yeah. what the song was. Yeah, no, that's actually a good, good tip. I've literally been in classes. I've heard something in my head Step and then out. gone to the bathroom and then got my phone out and like awkwardly in the stall just hummed it into my phone and it comes in clutch it does and honestly it really does, yeah. i don't think that idea ever became anything but i probably forgot still, that that it was on my phone yeah, that'll happen to me the same thing with like lyrics and what i was saying with like writing down one like thing that's intriguing it's like i have four like I have to go through my phone and delete all like the thirty second videos of black screens of just random melodies or random chord progressions that I think are cool that never turned into anything. Um, so yeah, listen to when your brain is giving you ideas. Do yeah. it now. Do it now. 
do it now. Pull over on the side of the road. Do it now. Yes. Uh, write it on a napkin. Write it somewhere if you don't have your phone. Yeah. Uh, write it somewhere because it will go away. And good luck getting it back. Yeah. Yeah. Because once it's gone, it's you're gonna regret you may it. Never come back. Yeah. So, so back to Siamese. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Um, I guess as far as the lyricism is involved. Um, well, yeah, so context was this was last summer or so. Was it? Yeah. Was it not two summers ago? It was last summer. Wow, time is weird. Time is weird. Time is weird. Um, that sort of point in my life, I wasn't very open with my... The song is from my mom's perspective, mm. which is weird. <laughs> that I wrote a song about my mom. Um <laughs> But, yeah, no, we, (laughs) um, the context was I was not open about my struggles with mental health, Mm. um, and also sort of my mother's ignorance for mental health at the time, um, and that's also due to my lack of sharing my feelings, um, bad, bad, bad communication all around, yeah, but, um, the song really was like the point was to try and understand where my mom was coming from and also like what am I doing wrong hmm. um, so it's like talking about like the main line of the chorus like honestly you just need therapy it's like I, I was in therapy at the time or like I was in therapy before and like I wasn't really getting anywhere with it. So it's like, you know, like there are certain different solutions for everyone. And, um, yeah, I, I don't you know. You can interpret it anyway. You can, you can interpret like it many in, in many ways. But that that's sort of what it Some came from. Some people think from. we're telling somebody that they need therapy. Yeah, and that's, that's, all, that's what we've been doing with TikTok is like promotion. Like everybody yeah. should... To get therapy. Everybody should get there. Really Please get there. talk no, to somebody. Wait, we need to get like, yo, we gotta hit up Jason for this. Like, you know, like those online therapy things. We gotta get our got that song on there. Mm. Yeah, for like those ads, you have to get like those a ads. theme, like yeah. a theme song for therapy. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like that'd be really bad, probably. Like better help. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that'd be a good idea. Never mind. It's no. a bad <laughs> idea. <laughs> <laughs> really <a> bad idea. <laughs> Well, that aside, this yeah. is Siamese by the real fake flowers. <laughs>
And that was Siamese by The Real Fake Flower. So we we kind of got cut off mid-conversation uh, outside of the music. So we were, t- we were talking about uh, emails and connections and how was how did that uh, differ from as opposed to the, to the manager side and then for you guys. Yeah, uh, so we started sort of not like super recently, but a few months ago we were... I mean, just in general, we've been trying to like reach out to you know people like for as, as endorsements, you do. Labels. Yeah. labels, bookings, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just like anything. But you know, it's for some reason getting an email from a manager <laughs> is so much more so much more powerful, powerful. Yeah, in getting responses. So like we would like get either automated responses. Like we would, we would never get declined. Just like, kinda like, it would just be like ignored. <laughs> yeah, it would be like we're gonna dance around what you said and just be like, yeah, we're not gonna say no, but we're saying no without saying no. Yeah, but once we had Jason start doing that for us, like people started like responding and like we yeah. had some cool opportunities. I think just having another person that vouches for what you're doing is really outside of yourself. Yeah, yeah. which I mean, it's kind of like it, it's kind of terrible because. There are some people like that deserve certain things that are just on their own, but just having another person is so much. Yeah, I people mean, take it seriously. You don't. You don't need to be another person. Just make a, a fake Gmail account. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Pretend account. to be your manager. <laughs> well, technically, you guys are your managers, right? Until you get a manager, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I, I, it's always, it's always been the uh, question for me too, as a person who's trying to reach out to all these uh, insane. We were talking about all the people I've, I've, I've had on and all the connections that I have, uh, but trying to reach out to someone like, for example, I tried to reach out to Chicago when they came, like the band Chicago yeah. when they came here, and I was like, where do I even start? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, hi, I'm a big fan. <laughs> yeah. but I, you know, I really love Chicago, but like, uh, I, I'm sure, and I'm sure. The reason why managers are good at this was because they've had, you know, the experience of doing it. Right. Yeah. But uh, for for those of us who are just like, uh, you sound pretty cool. I want to talk to you. Or oh, that's this is a cool venue that I've always wanted to perform at. Can we perform there? It's it's and putting that in a, into a professional uh, paragraph, right? Right. That doesn't sound too desperate or doesn't sound oh, oh we're all this too o- egotistical. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a balance and a half. Balance, yeah. yeah, because we would try and take like the modest approach when we started emailing, mm-hmm. and Jason kind of throws in like a little bit of like the these guys are kind of killing it right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, he's Jason is like really good at writing emails. He's also the type of person to kill people with kindness, so he'll like oh, yeah. offer like. He we, offered me, you want anything to drink? You want dinner? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah. Was like, yeah. I was just about to say that. Oh, my God, that's so funny. Um, we, like, got in contact with somebody from Apple Music that playlists, and this dude is, like, so straightforward, right to the point, like, doesn't waste any time messaging about anything other than, like, business. And Jason's just like, do you want, you want a Starbucks? I'll, like, I can door dash you some Starbucks or something. And this guy was just like, nah, I'm good. And then just goes right back good into, like, the whole business thing. Yeah. So what's – I, I kind of asked this before, but what's next for you guys? Do you guys uh, – what's what do you guys think is the next step for you to elevate your careers content. as musicians? Yeah. Definitely content. Um, we, like, for some reason there <laughs> – there's bands that will release like one or two songs and then get like millions of streams. Yeah, Some, I don't and know how we're it like happens. acquaintances with a lot of them. Yeah, I mean, like it's crazy, but we don't have those numbers, so yeah, we need to be as um, quality put as much quality into like all sources of 
where you can find us. So right now, um, we're working on a lot of like video content, like mm. as far as like album release stuff. Um, for like, we're we're gonna do some videos like breaking down like the actual like logic sessions of our songs and like go into like all the different parts and that kind of thing. Um, and like music videos, um, maybe acoustic stuff as well. Yeah. Um, but that's like short term. Yeah, oh. short term so, stuff. So but, for all those songwriters, singer songwriters out there, never underestimate a good arrangement of previous songs you've done. Like if you yeah. take so if you have an electric song and then you break that down into an acoustic and then really have fun with it, yeah. you're gonna it's gonna make something completely different. If you play it on a different instrument, even yeah. and work on it that way. Granted, it's the same same stuff. Yeah, yeah. But it's gonna draw in so many different people. Yeah, people exactly. on TikTok love acoustic stuff. I yeah, don't, I don't. I'll like post yeah. the same acoustic vid, like I've done it three times and. It always gets views, and people are like, "This is fantastic." And I'm like, "Why does acoustic stuff do so well?" Because I'm kind of the opposite. I prefer like I, th- I think it's just because I like doing like production stuff that I just want to hear like a full I full think, wall of sound. Yeah, I think general audiences like to see acoustic because it feels more personal. personal. Yeah, I also think it's a a, tr- a a tribal. I don't know, pre like a pre prehistorical trait in us that we love to hear. Like whenever you hear like the the drums, like the tribal drums, or or yeah. uh, like a like a djembe or something like yeah. that. Yeah, no, if you so, hear tribal drums, it's about to go down. Yeah, that's true. Well, uh, but still, but you you feel it. You're like, oh, okay. Yeah, and, no, there's and something it, intimate and it personal gets you. about yeah. acoustic guitars, especially like not guitars, just acoustic sets and singer songwriters live. Yeah, I also th- feel like it it gives you an extra boost because it's like I'm actually doing this. Yeah, right. yeah. Like That's you're not hiding behind anything when you're right. doing an acoustic set. Honestly, they're kind of scarier. I'm I'm sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, and we next Wednesday. Oh oh my God yeah yeah we're going up to um, least of all uh, recordings in New York to do like sixteen different yeah. personalized like um, vinyl like limited vinyl thing yeah and it's like. As you record, the vinyl is like, oh, cut. that's so, scary. Like, yeah, you, like any mistakes you make, it's those there. are those are in there. Yeah, so yeah, we're we're, we're working on that. Yeah, right we got to rehearse for that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, but I, I mean, at the same time, like mistakes are also human. Yeah, of so, course, right. So yeah. like, it, we embrace all the mistakes. Yeah. So like, if I forget the words, especially like on stage, that happens for some reason. Oh yeah. I'll just go like. Whoa! Just like, like make like a weird start noise. Scatting. Yeah, I started scatting at our show um, with Mega Mango. Yeah. Um, it's kind of funny. It was yeah. really funny before the show. Um, we were kind of just playing random stuff, and we uh, started playing our song "Kill 'Em All," and uh, this was like in the back. And um, Kiffer started the first verse, and then halfway through, I always forget. This. Forgot the second half of the first verse, and then I'm just like, "Nah, you just don't even think about it. You'll be fine." And we go on stage to play it, for real. Sure and then, and then I forgot. Yeah, forgot it. But then uh, it honestly made it so much better and funnier. Yeah, and we also, um, the lore behind that song. Personally, I don't like the song. <laughs> yeah. Um, Maybe that's why you forget. Yeah. Uh, but we we changed the intro, and it's something that we rehearsed like two times. And we we instead of like what we did before we did like a ska, like really like mm, upbeat mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. So it was kind of like a bunch of new things at once. Yeah. Because we also, we don't play that song much yeah. live. It's not our favorite. No. I feel like It was our first that. attempt. Yeah, it was our first first song. Tell me about a time where you, do you oh, do you guys ever feel imposter syndrome? Are you familiar with that term? Yes. I, I am, but I'm also, like, not very good on what it means. <laughs> I I think, like, oh so wow, well, putting words to a word is hard. So imposter syndrome is where you go, say you go to Berkeley, and you have all of these amazing musicians, and you're just there like, I don't belong here. Yeah. Like right. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> tell me about tell me about the, that time where it happened. What what uh, you did about it, or if you did anything about it. Yeah. Um. I think that usually happens, at least for me, after I make a lot of mistakes on stage. Mm. Um. Because seeing other people on the bill play better than you. That isn't a good feeling. No. Um. I mean, but it's also, like, a part of being an upcoming band. Like, yeah. you're going to play with people that are more professional and way better than you. They've done this for years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like, the people that we usually play with have been, like, yeah. But at the, super experienced. at the same time, it's also, we're trying to be this band that's more professional. So we're trying to get up to there, and then when we don't reach that mark, it's really um, discouraging. Sucks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, I think we're getting better, especially at the live thing. Oh, um, yeah. Because that, that's it really hard to some, do. Yeah, you just got to play live. And sometimes it's really, like, awkward and weird. Like, when you first start, you're going to play to empty venues, mm-hmm. which we've done. Not empty, empty, but, yeah. like, Or people venues. that... That aren't there I mean, for the music. Yeah. They're not there for the music. Or they're not there for you. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah They don't yeah. care about you. Right, yeah. And it's sort of like... Especially when you're starting out, you like are playing to win over a crowd, and you fail to do that. Yeah, mm-hmm. it can be a very discouraging thing. But someone, um, someone shouts, "Play Freebird!" Oh yeah, my god, it, the funniest joke ever. <laughs> <laughs> it makes oh me laugh god. every time. <laughs> I hate that joke too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there, there could be funnier jokes. There could yeah. be funny jokes. It, like, like smoke on the anyway, water. Anyway, here's Wonderwall. Like, that's that's more <laughs> funny. Yeah, like just put the capo on the second fret, play the first chord, just take it off, and don't yeah. say anything into the mic. Yeah, that's I, funny. <laughs> that'd be funny. Here's something. Here's one of my favorite jokes of all time. Uh, I learned the first riff to uh, a thousand miles. Diddly diddly do. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so I'll play that, and people are like, oh, that's my song. And, like, and I stop because I don't know the rest. Of yeah. It. yeah. Yeah. And they're like. They get so mad at me. Or I'll, I'll, play, I'll play the chord progression that Don't Stop Believing because I know that, but I don't yeah. know anything beyond the first verse. <laughs> yeah. I had to Funniest play that. stuff. I had to play that for School of Rock one time on piano. I don't play piano. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that must have been fun. <laughs> yeah, no. That School was an experience. Rock. Mixed feelings about School of Rock. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fair enough. I, I have mixed feelings about school in general. Yeah. Yeah. I think we... I think it's safe to say we all do. I, I don't have mixed feelings. I'm, like, like, I'm I, out. Yeah, I, 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 I got Kipper's <laughs> very, very secure in their no, feelings. I, well, secure in, in my feelings, but not in my financial situation. Yeah. <laughs> right, of course. But, I mean, yeah. school wouldn't change that. It's all good. Yeah, it'd probably make it worse. Probably make it worse. Yeah. So tell me about a time where you guys went to uh, a gig and everything went wrong, or everything went right. What'd um, you guys do? I feel like we'll start with. Well, I feel like we haven't. We've never been to a gig where everything went wrong. We've been to a gig that was really weird and awkward. Um, Let's talk about that one. Yeah, we'll start with that one, and then we'll do do a good one. Um, um, what, what, which one do you think? There's 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 a few. Um, I feel like either Boston. Boston was weird. Boston and was weird. But I feel like it wasn't the weirdest because we did have some people there that did want yeah. to say Rat's Den. You thought Rat's Den was weird? I thought that was weird. I didn't think Rat's Den was that weird. I thought what the first Long weird? Island show was the weirdest. Uh, ow. <laughs> yeah, there is nails on in the ah, chair. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I Got feel it. like weird means people... There's Okay, well, to begin, there's not like that. There, there's barely anyone there, which isn't a problem. Like, we don't care. We just... We're just like I still have fun. Right. Yeah, yeah, we're still playing, um, but it's just like people there. It's just it's just people standing, and it's really weird and awkward. We're trying to engage with people, but nobody is engaging back. back. Um, before or after the set, just vibes are weird. Yeah, between everyone, it's like nobody's like really talking to each other. Yeah, that that's it's like a room of NPCs. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, yeah exactly. Like yeah. That. It's like. <laughs> I was gonna try and say a, a line from Skyrim, but I don't remember. <laughs> like, like you're just walking up to an NPC in Skyrim. And oh my God. So like, Hello, how are you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they, they walk I'd around say, you. <laughs> I'd say our 
our first show we ever played. Um, it was in Boston, um, and there were two other bands, two other, three other, three, three other bands, and they were like Berkeley bands. Um, that, that means they're um, very complicated music. Yeah, maybe, very much maybe. prog. Oh, uh, <laughs> and very yeah, like we kind of level seven jazz. It was the, everybody else was kind of like softer music too. Mm. Um, so we kind of stuck out a little bit for being like not in a good way louder. I yeah, I think I don't know. I like sticking out no matter what. Yeah, um, it, we were the most fun band to watch. I think. Yeah. When when that happened. Um, because it was just chaos. Yeah, it was chaos. It was our first show, so me and Kip were both extra awkward. Um, we're already awkward, and we're still awkward. It's just I feel like it's more endearing now that we know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a controlled awkward. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on the other side of the coin, uh, our best show is probably our last one. I keep bringing it up, but yeah, our show with Mega Mango, and what was going to be seeing double, but um, they couldn't make it because they got into a car accident. Oh, no. Um, yeah, they were like 20 minutes away from the venue. They're fine. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, everybody's, chilling. everybody's fine. And they played it, played at a venue like two days later. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was uh, – Mega Mango has been really cool to us. Yeah. Um, we have been sort of uh, – what's the word? Acquaintances. Yeah, we've kind of like for a bit. befriended them. Yeah, and yeah. – um. So that that whole vibe and just getting to like know them a little bit better and uh, um, playing to like there was like that show was the first time that people were there who we didn't know who were coming to see us play yeah and, and like they knew the words to our songs which oh was, wow yeah like it's the that's weirdest cool. experience ever like having like I was like I was hearing something and I'm like wait that's not Kiffer what's happening right now yeah um, it's gotta be surreal yeah yeah no, so, it really was. And when that happens on the first song and, like, people are smiling and singing, it's, like, that instantly just makes it so much fun. So much yeah. more worth I it. I was like, this is going to be an excellent show. Like, yeah. Fr- right off the bat from the first song. I messed that song up so much. And I'm like, I don't even care right now. This yeah. is so much fun. That's how I felt when, when people started uh, walking up to me on the street. Like, oh, you're the guy from the podcast. I'm like... Yeah. Yeah, like, I guess. <laughs> neither neither me or Kiffer, I don't think, have been recognized in public by anybody. Well, it's whenever no. I'm at like a, a venue to like yeah, scout yeah, out yeah. other people exactly. and they're like, Oh, they're yeah. you you're that guy who interviewed that person. Wow. I'm like yeah. yeah that's, that's me. me. Yeah. That's, that's me, me, baby. That's me. Yeah. But I'm also very much it might seem like um I'm gonna pull back the current. It might seem like a I'm a big extrovert. I'm not. Oh no. I'm such an introvert. No. I feel like anybody oh. in this industry is yeah. Not everybody, but all the people we like are insane yeah. introverts. Yeah. yeah. Including us. So how do you, do you have to turn that off and when you go on stage you turn on the extrovert or I don't I don't really think it's much of that. It's sort of just like you're playing a character. Yeah. If mm-hmm. that makes sense. Also, it's it's sort of like you hyperbolized. Yeah. You know. It's a good way and to put it. And I think it. we still look and sound very much like introverts but it's kind of our shtick and our thing yeah. we kind of just embrace that we're awkward weird. and weird it's just after one song it's so so you want you want to play uh yeah, this other song? yeah. <laughs> that, we we do that yeah <laughs> so, but like it's a funny bit i think yeah. as we perform more i feel like we will start to become extroverts on stage but i don't think the extrovert off stage is ever i mean the introvert off stage is ever going to go away no. I just like not talking to people and being by myself. Yeah, you could say I'm, so nice. could say I'm addicted to it. <laughs> oh, are you? You could, you could, you could call me. I don't think an, anybody understands. But an us. introversion addict. Yes. Mm. Stream introversion addict on all platforms. Oh, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, what's happening? <laughs> the bit, the bit, the bit. Uh,. Yeah, this is something I've been having to uh, work with because I have to be this introvert person. When and that's why always before like interviews, and this is also pulling out the curtain, but I'm also I'm like really dead quiet. 
because I don't and I'm, I'm saving my energy for right. for the yeah. hour and a half long uh, or however long it goes episode, and so it's like super awkward, especially when like an extrovert person comes in and yeah. like they're asking me questions and I'm like, okay, I guess I have to spend a little bit of energy energy now. Fair enough. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's being in a good headspace is is very important when it comes to do doing anything live. Oh, for sure. Um. Yeah, <laughs> uh, especially for me because that I get into. I mean, I'm sure everyone has the thing, but it's like just getting into a mood where you just don't want to be around people, um, and it's hard to get out of. Yeah, and it, it's it's something that you have to work at, <laughs> which yeah. wasn't something that I was expecting. Sort of going into playing live music, so yeah, no, just like anything, it's something you pr- practice. It, yeah. uh, it's it's a mental. It, it is a total frame of mentality because you're by yourself, you're enjoying something, and then someone comes up to you and you're like, "All right, here we go." Yeah, yeah. I feel like I don't have that problem. I just it takes a while for me to warm up to people. Mm. Like I'll be weird and awkward around like groups of large people and other just like even like one-on-one with people I'll just not really talk that much but like I don't mind I can be around people all the time it's just I just don't like talking that much you ever get uh, confused with social cues and like you just stay there a bit too long and you're sure <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm gonna go to the bathroom <laughs> dude that's that's like half of my life right now where I'm like okay I, I finished talking to this person uh, but I don't have well we're kind of just chilling here uh, um, hmm. yeah. and it's like this is awkward hmm. so I'm going to move over here and make it more awkward because yeah. that's or how do I not move because that would be awkward that would be, yeah, <laughs> exactly yeah do they do they want me here or wait do they don't like do they not like me and Dude, they just want to not say anything or am I just like the most awkward thing uh, that I've been a part of recently is is after the music musicians are done because i know the musician that there is waiting for everyone else to get done and you're just like standing there like watching them have their interactions like yeah i'm literally alone here so it's not like i could talk to a friend or anything and i only know them so yeah. it's like i have to wait here and watch right <laughs> uncomfortable people. Um, i'm comfy <laughs> i am uncomfy i am uncomfy but speaking about uh, being comfortable, what are some of the things that you can tell musicians to encourage them to become more comfortable on stage? Uh, don't care. Don't Just stop caring. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's it, yeah. that's sort of like generic life advice. No, advice. I know. That's don't really, don't care about what other people think of you. That was you. a joke, kind of, because it's you it's should hard. Care, you should it's care a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, yeah, a little. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. But like when you're up there and you're like trying to do your thing, it's your thing. Like, it's your thing. Like, yeah, own it. Just do it. <laughs> That's really hard and really generic advice, advice, but... It's a lot harder than it yeah. seems. But it's, but it's so important. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because, and the more you do it, the more you're just right, going to get practice comfortable. Practice not caring. Yeah. yeah. Go out to an open mic. Do whatever you want. Because, for, first off, it's an open mic. No one's going to care anyway. Yeah. Uh, your set's over in, like, five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you got five minutes, bro. Yeah, you got <laughs> five on. minutes to do whatever you want. Um, and don't care about it. Literally. Yeah. You you can get such in a downward spiral from those little seeds that get in your head. Well, blah, 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 blah. and yeah. you just can't let it hold you. You're a musician. Yeah. People have been making mistakes for centuries. You're not the first one to do it. Yeah, so, and you won't be the last. Yeah, something I personally do is, no matter what the situation is, if it's on stage or like if I'm just in a really awkward conversation, I just tell myself that this is not awkward and that everything is normal just right gaslight. now. This is I like, gaslight yeah, I gaslight yeah. myself into believing that everything happening right now is completely normal. He is the dog in the room of fire. <laughs> this is fine. And it really, <laughs> honestly, helps mindset-wise. But it does, yeah, because uh, even like when like you're in bed and you think of all the disastrous cringe things you did over the over your entire life. Yeah, yeah I'm just like, that was, that was fine. Totally normal and justified. Oh, yeah. Totally normal. There's some things you can't justify, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like, I was yep. a devil child. Yep. It was a devil child. Yeah, I was like six, and I was very violent for some reason. But now I'm chill, too, so actually, yeah. yeah. I threw a desk in first grade at, at one of my friends. Yeah, for me, it was a shoe. I would, yeah. like, I'd throw shoes at people. Yeah. I hope my mom's not watching. 
Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was, is that where you learned it from? <laughs> <laughs> I was the complete opposite. I was just like, yeah. Now Kiffer's extremely violent. Now <laughs> I, now I, I, uh, I have malice behind every every decision I make. It's been seething it, bottling up for years. Oh, yeah, and it's time to release. Oh yes. And it'll be released in their album coming out. This yes. is true. August 23rd. <laughs> That's true. The segue, the segue. <laughs> the segue, it's the segue for the win. Uh, uh, last question. What are some of the funniest moments that have happened to you guys or in the crowd on stage? Definitely the one we mentioned before about Kiffer forgetting lyrics. That yeah. Was, that was just funny. That was, that was funny. Um, um, I, li- I like to do a bit, and it was a, especially, especially, um, What's relatable? Words. What, yeah, what words? Um, especially a parent mm. at our last show. Um, when people were singing all the words, we have like, um, in the middle of our set, we usually do like one or two covers. So uh, the bit that I like to do is like, once we get there, it's like, I mean, for that show in particular, I was like, wow, you guys are like singing the words and that's really cool. And then everyone's like, yeah, I was like, in light of that, we're gonna play some songs that we didn't write, and it was I, I love like deadpan jokes yeah. like that because yeah, like things that just aren't really that. Yeah, just, and just like say it and then just like walk away from the mic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's just funny to me. One of my favorite jokes of all time is, uh, "What do you get when you cross a rhetorical question and a joke?" Big chungus. What? What do you get when you? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't do well with any of this. What do you get when you cross a rhetorical question with a joke? Is there supposed to be an answer? I don't know. What's the rhetorical question? Oh. What's the joke? Yeah, see, I don't do good with the, with these. Mind I, I like my I, I like my punchline a little bit better, but you know. no, I mean, <laughs> it's wait because I always I always pull that out at the most. Whenever I'm like leaving, I'm like, all right, what do you get with the you know that and. And like I'll do that at the dinner table with my friends, and I'll just leave, and they're like, "Oh, yeah, no." If you <laughs> walk away from, you walk away. I'm never gonna understand it. I'll have no idea what you're talking about. I don't get humor. You're getting there. You're I'm getting, getting there. there. I get I, a very specific type of humor, but I don't yeah, get Kipper's I, humor. M- I have br- full brain rot right <laughs> here, <laughs> and I'm trying to corrupt Nate. <laughs> Well, this has been a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So, uh, once again, where can people find you? Uh, where are you guys performing? There is a Phantom Power somewhere in the mix. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Spotify, Spotify. Instagram. Spotify. Uh, Just search Real Fake Flowers. Uh, Patreon. Website. www.realfakeflowersband.com. Yeah. Uh, uh, TikTok? Please. TikTok. Yeah, please follow our Instagram. Yeah. And our TikTok, if you do that thing, and listen to our music on Spotify. Yeah. Most importantly, listen to music. If you search Real F on Spotify, it's the first one that comes up. That's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. Trying to get real. Right now it's Real Friends, which is a cool band. But yeah. um, We will do it. We will do it. <laughs> we, will, we shall surpass. We're going to beat you. We're going to beat you. Music but is a competition. Music is a competition. Always a competition. Berkeley <laughs> College of Music. Berkeley College of Music. It's competition. Everything. 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 Always. Well, if you guys have enjoyed this episode, please be sure to like, follow, subscribe, share with your friends. The story, Corey Rosen, that's C-O-R-Y-R-O-S-E-N. You can find that anywhere you are streaming anything live. And uh, if you want to check out our upcoming guests, check out our Facebook page or Instagram page at the at the underscore story underscore podcast. And if you really want to support us, we have merchandise. We have stickers and we have hoodies and shirts with the first 50 guests on the back. I must have bad news for you guys. We're not the first 50. No, you guys are 68, actually. Wow. <laughs> so close! So close! I know. Damn. I just leave. <laughs> <laughs> so close. That is tragic. Um, it's okay. But hey, if you guys want to check out uh, Monday, we have... Our, actually, well, this evening, we have another uh, episode dropping with uh, Catherine Britt. She's, gonna, she's a... International award-winning artist, country artist. Uh, she's won several CM- CMA, A, that is Country Music Awards of Australia Awards. Imagine the Taylor Swift of Australia. That's her. She's coming here to tell us August 21st at 6 p.m. Also, Monday, we have 
a local cat, Louis Bechtold of Blues on the Loose. It's a really cool, yeah, what a band name, right? That's fun. Uh, yeah. And he's an incredible man that I'm excited to talk to. With all that said, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Later.